हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब एंड वेलकम टू टूडेज वीडियो दिस वीडियो विल गिव ए कंप्रहेंसिव गाइडेंस ऑन ट्वेंटी वन सेफ ऑफ पार्ट इलेवन रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर मेडिकल डिवाइस मैन्युफैक्चर सी मेकिंग श्योर दैट मेडिकल डिवाइसेस मीट द रिक्वायर्ड क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड इज इसेंशियल टू प्रोटेक्टिंग पब्लिक सेफ्टी in order to ensure compliance medical device companies need to be familiar with 21 cfr part 11 a set of regulations by the us fda governing electronic records and signatures overall 21 cfr part 11 provides a framework for how medical device manufacturers can use electronic records and signatures in a way that protects the public and meets regulatory requirements while compliance may seem daunting at first understanding the requirements and benefits can help simplify the process let us begin with the very first point about understanding the cfr so if you go further the cfr stand for the code of federal regulations and all, uh, all together the cfr has got 50 different titles covering broad subject areas if you further dig down you will find that the title 21 talks about the food and drugs requirement below that the part 11 talks about the requirement as per as electronic records and electronic signatures is concerned and if you want to talk about uh, the medical devices requirement it is actually mentioned under the part number 800 let us now understand what is the 21 cfr part 11 and uh, this 21 cfr part 11 is the fds section of regulations that governs electronic records and electronic signatures requirement every document and record that you create to demonstrate compliance with fda requirements for 21 cfr part 820 or other regulations must also meet the regulations found in 21 cfr part 11 see there are several benefits uh, to complying with 21 cfr part 11 including increased efficiency and data accuracy by moving to an electronic record keeping system life sciences organizations can save time and money while still maintaining a high level of quality control in addition to uh, the benefits such as electronic records are easier to track easier to manage than the paper records uh, you will also find that it is more simpler and it will ensure the compliance as per the regulatory requirement so does 21 cfr part 11 apply to medical device companies see this regulations apply to all medical device manufacturers regardless of their size startups and small businesses so you have to expect that the 21 cfr part 11 compliance is applicable to all multinational conglomerates with bigger budgets and even the smaller companies so what does 21 cfr part 11 apply this section of the code has been in effect for over now 20 years so it's expected that all medical device manufacturers will be complying at this particular point or the requirement if you are a small business just uh, transitioning away from uh, paper records understanding and complying with 21 cfr part 11 will be key to your successful transition if you are a medical device startup use this guide to get your systems set up correctly out the out of the gate now what uh, qualifies as an electronic record see an electronic record is uh, any document or record or electronic form that you are generating and uh, are saving in a digital format this includes uh, records that are generated through an electronic uh, quality management system software like uqms like you can talk about the lib software or the trackwise application software 
but also records that are simply scanned copies of paper documents if the scanned copy becomes the official record. So whatever scanned copies you are making as official record also become the electronic record. All electronic records with signatures must indicate the, the first one is what the printing uh, name of the signer, printed name of the signer, uh, the date on which the record has been generated, uh, the time when the record is generated along with the electronic signature of that particular person. Another important point is the meaning of the signature like whether you are approval, you are a reviewer or you are a generator of the record. So I think all this becomes the part of the electronic record. Let us now understand the digital signature versus electronic signature. Now this is where things start to get a little bit more technical. See part 11 discusses both digital signatures and the electronic signatures. A digital signature is encrypted using a computer algorithm. The signer's identity is verifiable and this type of signature is highly secure and difficult to tamper with. An electronic signature is more common and is simply some sort of electronic representation of a signature that is saved to a document with the signer's identity, the intent of the signature and the date and the time that the signature was applied. As an alternative, the regulation makes an allowance for uh, signature that are applied with a stylus to be equivalent to a wet ink signature. If applying this method of signature to your system, it's critical that your personnel are well trained and understand the saving an image of their stylus signature to use repeatedly does not meet this requirement. Each signature must be uniquely written just as if signing a piece of the piece on the piece of the paper. As a best practice, the date should also be handwritten to further indicate that it is an original signature and not a copy. Further, uh, the document should be converted to a PDF or similar that is not easily edited to prevent tampering. This is an easy meaning. Uh, this is an easy means of uh, signature compliance for very small medical device companies, especially now that touch screens are you know for the common place both on computers and the phones. Then uh, applying 21 CFR Part 11 uh, to your QMA system is something a great way to have the error-free systems in the place. See, one of the first steps to establish a Part 11 compliant system is to notify the FDA that you will be using electronic signature and you can refer 21 CFR Part 11 uh, 100 subpart C for mailing details. This notification must be completed in paper format with uh, handwritten signatures. Uh, this certification must specifically document that you will be using electronic signature in place of handwritten signatures and that these electronic signatures are intended to be legally binding the same as handwritten signatures. A copy of this letter should be written in your QMS records for any future reference or the use. Let us now understand what is meant by closed system and the open system. See, so you will also need to decide what type of system you will be using to manage your electronic documents and records. There are two main systems. Uh, one is called as the closed system and another one is called as the open system. A closed system is self-contained and very much common in an electronic quality management systems for medical device companies. In contrast, an open system is something more along the lines of a series of electronic folders or a SharePoint system with documents filed. So some medical device companies may use some combination of closed and open systems. 
So what is the closed systems all about? See, the easiest way to ensure compliance is to use closed system that is 21 CFR part 11 compliant. A closed system must be validated which can either be completed by your company or often a validation can be provided by the software provider. There is no 21 CFR part 11 certification as such. So you will need to do your due diligence when evaluating the supplier to ensure that the system is truly part 11 compliant. As part of the assessment, you will want to verify that the supplier can meet the following requirements. What are the requirements? And this is about the, the software evaluation checklist part. So you can understand what is the checklist, what are the checkpoints you have to consider as per as understanding that your closed system meets the 21 CFR part 11. The first one is, are records uh, retrievable for the required retention period? See, so you will want to consider how records can be retrieved if the software company goes out of the business or no longer provides support for that version of the software. Can the records be exported out of the closed system for archival purposes? This is a question you need to ask the, the service provider. The second point, uh, are appropriate security measures are in place to limit the access? See the password protection, timeouts if inactive for a few minutes, regular password resets should all be in place for a strong system. Similarly, do a administrator accounts have good god powers where they can make uh, backdoor edits? See, this should be a red flag. The system should not rely on the integrity of your personnel but rather should be robustly built to prohibit backdoor access. For example, if administrators can update the, the file directory through the server instead of through the closed system, the system is not truly closed um, and this could be a potential liability and a system with this limitation should come uh, at a much lower cost. And the next important question you should ask, is there a clear audit trail in place for all revisions to documents or records with timestamps? Timestamps need uh, to include the time zone as well. You should be able to verify the order signatures were applied to a document or record even if signers or the signers are in multiple time zones. I think that is very essential part of uh, evaluation of your software provider. So let us talk about a little bit what is the open systems requirement. An open system is uh, generally more cost effective. However, it is more manual and inherently riskier than, than the closed system. Keep in mind that there may be increased uh, labor costs that should be considered as part of your cost benefit analysis. For an open system, you are or you must maintain the same requirements of a closed system to the extent possible. Access to edit documents should be limited to appropriate personnel. Retrieval should be possible throughout the retention period and wherever, wherever possible, an audit trail should be maintained. For some basic security, uh, computer logins uh, should use a unique username and password to apply an initial layer of security and authentication uh, to documents and record must be applicable. So user passwords should be routinely changed, maybe on quarterly basis you can do that. Now this will help to minimize the risk of password sharing. Uh, and uh, the next important point is when are electronic or digital signatures required uh, for the medical device manufacturing company. See compliant uh, signatures are one of the trickiest part of uh, meeting the part 11 compliant requirement for small manufacturers but with a close reading of this 21 CFR part H20 there are only a few places where signatures are explicitly 
required. So what are those uh, part where signatures are required? So these are the following places where the signatures are required. So 21 CFR, Ed 20, 30 C, design inputs, design outputs, document control, process validation, receiving in process and finished device acceptance, device labeling injections, inspections, non-conformity, review and dispositions. So if signatures are not explicitly required, you can use another means of documenting the requirements of the regulations. For example, uh, A2030I uh, identifies the, there must be procedures for identification, documentation, validation, verification, review and approval of the design changes. Typically, review and approval are documented with a signature, but this does not have to be the case. Review and approval could be documented with a stamp and email confirmation or other means, as long as any process used is clearly defined in your procedure. I hope you must have now understood the 21 CFR Part 11 requirement for the medical device company. Thank you so much and keep watching, keep learning.